Today we're looking at production, and production is a function of firms. So firms produce. They use inputs to produce, and eventually what they want to do is they want to minimize their costs. Or to state it differently, is they want to choose a point of output, or quantity of output, where their cost is as low as possible making it efficient to produce at that level and this will then generate more profit for the firm so let's have a look so when we introduce production it's important to consider the inputs that are required so to keep it simple we're just going to use two inputs so in this case we're going to say we have labor and we have capital and what we do with labor and capital is then we put these into a system that generate a certain activity or that makes use of an activity and that then generates an output and that function or that whole process we call a production function so that means the total number of goods that are produced given a set number of inputs and a combination of these inputs can then be illustrated by means of a production function. So this is exactly what we have here. So we say the total number of output is a function of the number of capital and the number of labor that we put into this equation or into this system and that will then produce our quantity. When we look at production, we always look at time. So time is very important when we talk about production. Why? Because we have two periods. The first is the short run and the second is the long run. So what's the difference between the two? Major difference is that in the short run you only have one input that is variable. That means if you look at a bakery you can hire more and more bakers but you only have for example one oven or one building which represent the capital. You can't expand that immediately. It needs time to do that. So therefore this illustration. So we have uh, the number of workers can change easily within the short run, but the capital is fixed. In the long run, both of these variables is, fi is, is variable. Sorry. Both of these inputs are variable. So that means you can use any combination of labor and capital to then produce a certain output and this whole process is called the production process so we we need the inputs so this is the input we put that into our production process we look at the function which is actually also technically the the, the um, technology that are used to produce so that means the technology will determine the quantity eventually combined with what the inputs are. So we put the inputs in, which is capital and labor. This is being produced or being changed by the technology that we have available. And then we have our output, which is our queue. When we do this whole process, and if you think about a bakery, for example, then you will know that as you increase your number of laborers so consider we're still in the short run we have one building so we expand the number of bakers that we have in our bakery so initially what we will get is we will get an increase in the total output an increase in the number of breads for example that we will get but after a while the additional labor the additional unit of labor illustrated here at the bottom on, on the x-axis the the additional bread that, that baker then adds is lower than what the previous baker actually added and that whole process we call the diminishing marginal return so there's still an increase in the total production up until a point and in this case at point d but the rate of growth the additional bread as we add a new baker starts to decrease from a certain point and at this point it's the number at four so then it's still an increase in the total product total number of breads still increase 
but at a reduced va value quantity. Next, is just a few terms that you need to remember. The first is we need inputs. It's labor and capital. We have output, which is Q. Then we can also quantify the average product or the average number of breads per laborer, per baker, or the marginal product. The marginal product is the additional bread that a baker adds to the total number of breads as you increase one more baker. Okay, so that's marginal product. When we go to the long run, we can now have variable or various ratios of variables of inputs that then can be used in order to produce a certain quantity of goods and services. So the first one that I want you to have a look at is that these red lines, we call them an isoquant. An isoquant is an illustration of a set quantity of goods produced. So we can produce 55 breads, for example, by using the combination of capital and labor, a variable combination. So it can be three capital and one labor, or it can be one capital and three labor, for example. Because in the long run, we can have two variables changing. It's possible. So as we expand our production, we will need a different combination of inputs of labor and capital. So these three lines, or the ISO quants, illustrate three different levels of output. So this is a level of output 55, and you can use, you can get this combination of output by using various inputs, a combination of various of the two inputs. The next thing that is important here is that we can possibly substitute one of the inputs for the other one but still have the same output. And that is called the MRTS, or the Marginal Rate of Technical Substitution. Basically what we say is we give up capital to add one more labor in order to get the same quantity. So if we let go of one capital, we then add one more labor. And that ratio between the two, in this case, it's four, and the difference between three and four, which is one, so we lose one capital. And then we have to add one labor to get the same quantity of output. In this case, it's one on one, so it's one. And lastly, we also look at returns to scale. So when we talk about production, we talk about returns to scale. And here we look at three. First is constant returns to scale. That means the number of inputs uh, is equal to, or the percentage increase in inputs is equal to the percentage output in total uh, total output so that means if we have one laborer and one capital we add one laborer we add one capital and we get one more output that see that is constant returns to scale increasing returns to scale means that if we have one laborer and we add one other capital and the output now is two that means that the additional labor and capital resulted in a higher value quantity of output. So that's increasing returns to scale. Decreasing returns to scale say we have one laborer and one capital that we add, but our output is just 1.5. So it's not constant, it's not more, it's actually less than the percentage increase in labor and capital. So at the bottom here I've had it added three graphs. This shows constant. So we the percentage change in capital and labor is the same as the additional output value. And this is decrease, sorry, increasing and that's decreasing returns to scale.